Did you drop your spear gun? Yeah. Trying to get it from the bottom of the canal? Yeah. <laughs> Great start to our trip. Wow. Wow. You got it. My spear gun. How long did that take you? Ten minutes. My brand new one. Never been in the water. No way. It was... That's the one that I replaced from the one that I lost last time when Alex and I lost all of our spear guns. Now right. we can go offshore. Yay. How's it going everybody and welcome back to another one of Lucky Strike Living. And if you take a look, I've got no fishing rods. Well, I got one. But today is a scouting mission day, a hang with my wife day, a hang with my dog day, and we're going to do a little bit of diving. Uh, my wife is not much of a diver, but we're going to try and help her out today and work her through it and see if we can get her to the bottom. What do you think? I'm going to try really hard. Diving is not my favorite. What do you think, Rip? So it is a beautiful day. It is 4th of July weekend and uh, I blocked a day off and here we are just enjoying a beautiful day. So one important thing that might be obvious to most but not to others is when you're diving, don't use your trolling motor. Always put in your anchor because if you're diving and your trolling motor malfunctions in any way, shape or form, your boat is, it's gone. But I hope you guys enjoy today. We are going to shoot a couple fish, not too many. Maybe a couple snapper. Hopefully we find a couple hogfish. And uh, we'll cook them up for you later. No clue what we're going to do, but... Hopefully I make it to the bottom. We're going to make it to the bottom. That's what we're... Hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you at the bottom. Welcome underwater, everybody. So, as we described earlier, this is Aubrey's first attempt on the day probably her third or fourth attempt um, since we've been together and if you're curious about our rig and our tank situation and how we have it it's going to be a little bit later in the video but we are on our way down together for the first time and uh, some techniques that I'm going to suggest for people if you are in this situation and your spouse friend whatever is unsure of the water is uh, have an octopus which is the second regulator which is in Aubrey's mouth so you're both on the same tank because you don't have to worry about anything but breathing and what helped Aubrey a lot I think is going down the rope so we put our anchor in the water and anytime we needed to stop or she needed to she needed to gather herself we could hold on to the rope we weren't going to drift we weren't going to do anything crazy and we we're just going to slowly work our way down. You'll see Aubrey giving me hand signals, thumbs up, telling me when to stop. So she has uh, very sensitive ears and she needs to pop them every eight, seven, six feet, something like that. So be sure you guys have a communication system underwater so that everybody is completely comfortable and everybody knows what the other person is doing. Once we got to the bottom, I was very confident that Aubrey was fairly comfortable and she could enjoy the amount of life on this spot. So I'm going to let you guys see what we saw. After about five minutes of bottom time, Aubrey gave me the signal that she wanted to go up. So this is a quick clip of us headed up the rope and we are on our way to the boat. Turns out that her mask was leaking just a little bit and that's the reason why she wanted to go up and it had nothing to do with her being afraid, which was awesome. She did it! Woo! You can't hear me. I made it to the bottom. 
made it to the bottom, now we're here. Huge success, I actually made it to the bottom. Um, I went down on Gordon's back, we're on the same, um, same tank. The original plan, because I get so scared, was to have my eyes closed. Because it's like the middle part that usually gets me, I, if I can't see to the bottom, I don't want to go. So I was going to keep my eyes closed, but I was feeling brave. So, <laughs> kept my eyes open the whole time. Made it to the bottom. Gordon says the water was still pretty dirty, and so I feel a little better because I could still see quite a bit. Um, so, that was a really big win for me. We did it! To get. We did it! Really, really big win for me to get to the bottom. Alright guys, dive number two, spot number two. Aubrey is still on my back, which you can see, and she is responsible for the GoPro because my GoPro mask broke. Uh, but yes, I do have a spear gun, and I felt it totally necessary for me to bring it because she was so comfortable on that first dive, and maybe we can get some good footage for you guys. <laughs> So I took a shot at that mangrove, thought I hit him square, but for some reason it pulled out. It kills me to injure a fish, but it does happen every once in a while. Typically I load both bands, but because Aubrey was on my back it was kind of difficult. So I think that's the biggest reason why that shot pulled, is it didn't have enough juice to get through him. Uh, but lesson learned. So as we move closer to this ledge, and yes, it's the first time I've ever dove it, you see a goliath grouper in the distance. And typically when big goliath are in the area and you shoot a snapper, they will attack it, charge it, and try to eat it because it is an injured fish. And the last thing I want to do is have to wrestle the snapper and then wrestle the goliath with Aubrey on my back. So once I saw that goliath, I was pretty sure that the dive, as far as spearfishing, was over. But that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy this dive and enjoy all the life on the bottom. Okay, dive number two was another success. <laughs> Saw some cool fish down there. Big Goliath. Well, you know, big for seeing it underwater. <laughs> um, but it's good. I'm feeling more comfortable. I filmed down while we were down there. Um, Gordon brought a spear gun, but he didn't obviously couldn't tell me underwater. But when we got back to the top, I asked him if it was hard to shoot with me on his back. He said he didn't want to tussle with said Goliath grouper with me on his back, which I was grateful for. So uh, he's probably gonna go down. I'm gonna hang out and rest a little. This is very tiring. I don't, Gordon said my breaths are three to his one. I think I'm a bit of a, yeah, anxious uh, breather. So I feel okay down there, but I'm using a lot of the oxygen, so. <laughs> so you probably saw me shoot at that one mangrove and I'm gonna review the footage and see exactly what happened why that pulled out because it looked like a pretty good shot but once i got closer to the ledge you saw that big goliath grouper and since this is her first day second time diving with her being semi-comfortable i know for a fact if i'd shoot a big mangrove and that mangrove starts freaking out and going all over the place that goliath's gonna go after it then i gotta go after it and with her on my octopus it would not go well it would not have gone well so i'm gonna take a few minutes She's gonna take a break and I'm gonna jump back in the water and shoot some of those big mangroves, hopefully. For dinner. Uh, for dinner, because I'm hungry. Hungry. I'm hungry. All right guys, dive number three, same spot as what you just saw. But now, time to get some dinner. Let's I go. got a makeshift rig, so we'll see how it works on the bottom. My goal is two. 
Bring Maybe home three. some dinner. See ya. All right, guys, dive three for me on that same spot. And my goal, like I said, is to shoot a couple for dinner. Um, I was very hopeful that I could get some, but from the time that Aubrey and I were down there to the time we got up, we had really spooked the area because we did spend quite a bit of time on the bottom. And most of those mangrove snapper have moved on. They're probably on the piece of bottom around the ledge, um, but very few shootable mangrove snapper but I know I'm coming up to the piece of the ledge where the mangrove snapper really like to hang out. And this one mangrove snapper slipped up and gave me a good shot. And this mangrove snapper made a move that impressed me. So this is a still frame of the second before that spear got to that snapper and it was right on its mark and that fish made a quick move and away he went so if you're curious why the angle of this footage is a little bit off is because when I went overboard I forgot my weight belt and if you've ever dove without a weight belt you know that the air in your regulator and BC and tank are trying to make you float so I'm fighting trying to stay on the bottom as best I can. Alright, so today was like a massive day for me. Um, and so Gordon doesn't even know I'm doing this. He's down on underwater right now. Um, so he might choose to use it, he might not. But um, today was a massive day for me because Gordon started diving or like got back into diving a couple years ago when he started his business and wanted to check out spots. And I was like, yeah, sure, of course. Like, I want to be adventurous. And I had like a freak out. Like we would practice in the pool to get me used to the tank and all that stuff and, and do all the things. And then we'd go out and I would freak out. Like I honestly had what I think was a low grade panic attack and I've never experienced that in my life. And so I, hi baby, and so I just like kind of accepted that like diving is not going to be my thing, which I was kind of okay with, but at the same time like just like felt bad. I know this is something that Gordon wants to be able to do together, um, and I mean I want to go to the Keys and do fun stuff like that, and I was just like really held back. I, I feel like I've lived most of my life a little bit like fear-based, and I don't want to do that anymore, so... I've had the goal of like trying to get over this, but then I would like literally, we were filming a, a video like a month or so ago and there were sea turtles and Gordon was like, oh, we'll just jump in the water, you know, on the top, you know, I'm not even having to go into water. And I like couldn't get away from the boat. I was like clinging to the boat. It was so embarrassing and so just like upsetting. And so again, I just was thinking like diving is not for me. I'm not gonna be able to do it. And so. Today's a big day. We did tandem. I just went on his back. Um, but when we got down there, I was not afraid. Um, it's actually super cool. Like I'm fascinated by what's under there. Um, so today was a, oh, hi baby, was a big step for me. Um, hopefully just a baby step in this whole thing. Of hopefully eventually I get to the point where I can wear my own tank and just head down there. Um, but today was a big, big day in the Watson house for me. Um, so I'm just really hopeful that, whoa, um, that I can keep going forward. Cause I just don't, I wanna do the things that I wanna do. I don't wanna be like bound by fear. So big day for us, really happy, really proud of myself. I know some of you guys are gonna be like, dude, this is no big deal. But for me, huge deal, gonna take the win and just really grateful um, for Gordon's patience. Um, and him trying to do everything to make me as comfortable as possible. It was really, really sweet, actually. So I am topside and like an idiot, I know you guys know, cause I told you underwater, I forgot my weight belt, but I went down anyways and the water got pretty dirty from our first dive and those snapper have dispersed quite a bit. There was a few around, but when you don't have a weight belt and you're floating and getting all crooked, it's not a really good idea. So I spent a little bit of time working around, swimming around, and decided to come up 
and we're gonna take a little bit of a break and we're gonna go hit one more and hopefully get some dinner. I do not want steak tonight. I want fish. Oh. Tell your fans, what are we doing? Dive number four. One, for three for me, four for him. Um, tried to get, Where are you going? Tried to get some fish for dinner. Um, honestly, the part that scares me the most is swimming from there to the anchor rope. <laughs> Freaks me out a little bit. So hurry up and get in the water so I can get on top of your back. See ya. All right, guys, we are done for today. Today was a huge success. My wife has officially, mostly, <laughs> hopefully, conquered her fear of diving. Hopefully. Now that she has done it, I can say she has been deathly, did I say deathly? Deathly afraid of the Loch Ness Monster. But we did it. She accomplished the goals. Do you have anything to say, my dear? I'm very proud of myself. I'm proud of you thank too. You. Well, thank you. For Did being awesome. So, sweet. so, goal one was to get her comfortable in the water. Yeah. It was an attempt because we've attempted before and failed. And failed. <laughs> but we did amazing today. Goal two was to shoot some fish for dinner. And the first spot, I wasn't going to bring a spear gun to hopefully make it to the bottom with her. Spot number two, like we said earlier, that Goliath grouper was a big one and he was going to eat anything on that spear and I didn't want to make my wife uncomfortable. So I didn't shoot anything there. Uh, spot three. You went down again. I went down like, again. Yeah. Spot number three, uh, they just weren't there because of our first trip. Spot number four was incredibly dirty. Dirtiest I've seen. So trying to shoot something and injure it just wasn't, not a good idea. So we are going home empty handed, but- But happy. <laughs> very, I very am. happy. The day could not have been any better. We're getting ready for lobster season. Yeah, I might actually get in the water now. <laughs> so we are going to wrap up. We're gonna head home and we are, she is gonna show you her famous what is it? Shrimp bowl? Shrimp bowl. Is it really famous? Because we've got shrimp at home because you always prepare for days like these when you come home empty handed. Uh -huh. But hope you guys enjoyed a little sneak peek of our lives and what we do on a day off. And we will see you at the dock. All right guys, we made it back and I'm going to ask my wife what helped her cure or help a lot for petrifiedness <laughs> when I, you guys don't know how scared she has been. We've been together nine, nine years? Yeah, almost 10. Almost 10 years and we finally that's not totally fair though. I didn't even know I had a fear of diving until like five years ago. So. Okay, so five years of struggling. Yeah, being on your back today was way better. So, so I... If you don't know yeah. what that is... I gotcha. This is my tank. My BC. My regulators and I have an octopus. So an octopus is the second regulator. So what she did was she just hopped on the back wrapped her mm -hmm. arms around me. So she didn't have to worry about the tank, the BC, nothing. She just had to worry about breathing. Yeah. If you breathe, you're gonna be fine. But sometimes we struggle to breathe. Your but hair is crazy. Like always, <laughs> we are not professionals. This is just what has helped for us. Mm -hmm. And if you have somebody who is absolutely petrified, just gotta stick with them try every different thing and when they yell at you just kind of suck it up because they're not really mad at you they're just <laughs> they're just scared they're just scared <laughs> they're just scared but hopefully that helps at least one person 
um, kind of conquer their fear, help conquer it, but we are going to clean up and we'll see you in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Peace. What's up guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, Gordon called it my famous shrimp teriyaki bowls. It's really nothing famous and it's not really mine. Um, and I'm so tired from diving that Gordon's gonna cook today. All right, so we've got our shrimp. They're frozen shrimp, and the best way to defrost them, in our opinion, is put them over water. Warm water, it mm -hmm. takes way less time than defrosting them in the uh, microwave. But we've got onions, all of our seasoning, pre-made rice, garlic, and veggies. Super simple, we're not fancy. Little salt on everything, little garlic powder, pepper, so one tip is shrimp excrete water when you cook it. Oh, okay. So you got to make sure that your pan is really hot. When I say really hot, I mean really, really hot so you can get a nice little crisp on your shrimp. If you keep it like kind of hot, then all the water just sits in the pan and it kind of steams. That is smoking hot. So we're going to add all of our shrimp at once. Give it a nice kick. So you can tell with how hot that pan was, there's a bunch of water in there. You can hear how much water's in there and how not very hot the pan is anymore. Look at all that water. That's from that shrimp. So be sure when you're cooking shrimp that it is super, 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 super hot. You can't get it too hot. All right, so the worst thing you can do is overcook shrimp. So since our pan was super hot, you can see the char on most of them. So you just keep it moving. If you, if you let the shrimp sit, they'll get super sticky and they'll leave a bunch. Yeah, so, bro. Italian seasoning going on last. We like the bunch. Fritz, 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 fritz. Good. And then keep those shrimp moving. So our shrimp is almost done. It's been about two minutes. I'm going to take them off, put them on a separate plate, and we're going to finish them later. All right, so Aubrey the other day got us a wok, so I'm going to try and use this for the first time. But while our shrimp is sitting aside, now it's time to cook all of our onions. Render them down. Get them in a pan. Salt. Pepper. And give them probably two minutes. Three minutes maybe. A little garlic. Now that our onions and garlic has rendered down, we're going to add back our shrimp so they pick up some of that flavor of the onions, the garlic. Just give that 30 seconds and then put them all back. Shrimp is done, onions are done. Now we like teriyaki rice bowls, mm -hmm. right? Is that what we're calling them? Yes. So we're gonna add our teriyaki sauce to our pre-made veggies mm -hmm. and rice. Whole thing right in there oh. with a bunch of butter. And the important part is to always keep your rice moving. So you keep adding your teriyaki sauce at the rate that you like your teriyaki-ness. So you can just add a little bit, you can add a lot, but remember, keep your rice moving. Okay, taste test. There we go. Adding a little soy sauce. Now we're going to add our final ingredients. Put all that back in there with a little bit. It looks good. I wish y'all could smell it. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for helping my wife conquer her fears of diving. Can't thank you enough because it was haunting her. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you for this food. Bless it, bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
<laughs> and that very very good guys it's super simple those shrimp are from walmart it's super easy just a couple ingredients don't overcook it don't overcook it but that's all we've got for you guys today hope you guys liked it please give a big congratulations to my wife who <laughs> conquered her fears it really is a big deal you guys don't even know but if you want to subscribe click the button right over here and to watch more videos right over there hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one